Hi, Paula Joe from Cedar Quilts with a Free Motion Friday What to Do with Your Batting Scraps with Hobbs Batting. So first of all, sometimes we have a lot of batting scraps around here. And so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna cut up some scraps with a rotary cutter, and this one has the squiggle cutter. And we're just gonna cut, 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 cut. And then one down the middle. I don't advise you trying this at home. I am a professional with a rotary cutter. So once you get enough batting cut into little squares, oh, and be sure that you put your protective cover on your rotary cutter, then we can start stuffing pillows with some bigger pieces of batting scraps. I've made some little bags, and then we just start stuffing all the little pieces in here until it's full enough. And then I usually make two layers of these bags, they're just the right size, and then we put some fun on the outside. So one of the really fun things that we can do for the outside of the pillows is to use t-shirt quilt pieces. Have a, a solid piece and a, a front of a, a t-shirt, and then I just did a little bit of stitching over the top. I had to stabilize it with a little bit of batting and then just a, a back piece of fabric here. But made two of those, we can put them together. A few other little fun ones here. We've got some shin and cuddle with a lot of texture here. These make wonderful fuzzy backs on quilts or pillows. Again, a cute little t-shirt. Here's some lounge pants that we've quilted up. Added a little, little football on here. And then here's just a real fun fun one and we'll put a salad back on that but just some fun stuff for on your pillow other than just t-shirt pieces for your outsides of your pillows if you have an extra block from a quilt that you're making you could put a couple borders around that and make a pillow that would be really cute to go with a a quilt um, even just some free motion on a piece of fabric that coordinates with your quilt would be nice or um, yeah all sorts of things so once we have the backs of the pillows and the fronts of the pillows figured out and I've quilted them, I'm going to trim off the backing and such and then we're going to be sewing them together and making pillowcases out of them. As with most sewing construction things, we're going to be putting the right sides together, we're going to be sewing around the edges, and then we'll be turning it right side out. When you go to close the pillow, you need an end that's open to put the puffing in there. And so one of the things that I did was I was using the, the hem of the pillow here, the hem of the t-shirt, and then I'm going to trim away some of this excess just a little bit. And then on the other side here, the matching side, I'm gonna trim away this excess and I'm just gonna flip that down so that I have a nice edge to sew. So I undid that basting stitch. I knew that I wanted this edge just a little bit longer than the square that I actually needed it to be. And so now I'm going to fold this back and I'm going to trim that little extra of the batting and the backing out of there so that I can fold that over nicely and have something easy and straight to stitch on for the edge of our pillow. And you'll see this in just a moment. Ooh, see, so now I've got this nice little edge and I can fold that under and it'll be just like the hem of the other side. And next we're going to be using my favorite fabric glue, Misty Fuse. It's an iron-on fusible, mm, it, it's spun 
glue and it's dry and you iron it on and it melts and it glues your fabrics together. So we're going to cut a little strip of this. We're going to put it on here and glue this end shut. It'll be wonderful. So I need to get some nice little pieces of this. And we'll cut that in half. Perfect. I'm going to be putting this on here and then using the iron to heat it up and glue that on there. And then I'm going to use another little bit and piece here. You can overlap this stuff. It's so much nicer than some of the other brands of similar items. I love Misty Fuse. If you order some, you tell Iris that Paula sent you. And uh, yeah, okay, we're gonna go over to the ironing board. This will be perfect. We're gonna be using our goddess sheets too, by the way. These are wonderful pressing sheets and nothing sticks to them. Okay, so we're back over here at the ironing board now and I have my Mr. Fuse goddess sheet. This is a Teflon silicone sheet that you put over what you're ironing and then nothing sticks to your iron. Or to your iron. We're going to get these little bits and pieces of Misty Fuse in place exactly where we want them. I'm going to use my little handy dandy tools to tuck them in so that they're on the fabric but not hanging over. And now we're going to press. And you just have to heat it up and then let it cool off a little bit. And let it cool. First little piece, I did not let it cool off completely enough. So let me get a little dab of batting and just wipe that off because nothing sticks to it. There we go, and now it's all perfectly clean again. And I'm going to finish gluing that one more time over here so it's a little bit neater. And now the glue is stuck to the back side of the pink pillowcase. And now as soon as I let this cool enough to peel it off again, we're going to lay it back over onto the white part. There we go. And now this will be sticky when we iron it again. And it'll all stick in place here. It's so cool, I love it. All right, got all the pins ready there. And again, just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna put my goddess sheet over the top. And we're going to just heat that up and melt it all together. And then that little hem is going to be so nice. And it's all glued on there now. It's not a real strong glue, but it's perfect for holding everything in place so that I can sew it. And then I don't need a lot of basting and pinning and things like that. So. Ta-da! And now that'll be a nice little edge to close our pillow. One other thing I want to show you is that whenever we're working with t-shirts, t-shirts stretch a lot. And so we have to have a stabilizing fabric that, again, is heat activated and glued onto the t-shirts so that they don't stretch all over the place. And then they're much nicer to work with. And the one that my friend Darlene always recommends is a Pellon product and it's called Shape Flex. 
and the number is SF101. This is the good stuff. There are lots of different brands of these stabilizers. Um, it has glue on one side and this is a woven fabric on the other side. When we do t-shirt quilts, t-shirts are so stretchy and they're just, oh, they're just a pain to try to quilt on. But if you glue this on first, it holds everything nice like regular quilting fabric and then they, they work so much better. So this is the fabulous trick. So it's a Pellon product. As I said, ShapeFlex SF101. Tell them Darlene and Paula sent you. Now, if you've been following me lately, you know that I love these clippets. They are the cutest little thing. I don't like using pins unless I absolutely have to. My friend Darlene always pins everything. And that's why her stuff is always so perfect. But I don't like pins, so if I can get by without them, I go without. But these clippets are fantastic. And I'm kind of sort of related in a shirt tail way with the guy who made these. But anyway, Quilters Perfect Clippets. They're wonderful. So now we're going to sew this around three edges. I need a couple more of these clippets. And then we are good to go. This handy dandy little baby lock journey sewing machine has a wonderful threader. For eyeballs that are over 50 years old, it's really nice not to have to thread that needle. So, okay, I now have pink and cream thread on here. I'm not going to be stitching this folded, nice, pretty hem edge to begin with. We are going to be stitching the three sides of the pillow. And I want a nice straight stitch here. And we're gonna go right about there. Gonna go forward a few stitches, go backwards a few stitches, and then come in again. Remove our clip it as we go. And now just to make sure that my front end corner here is going to be really nice and pretty, I'm going to start from the other side here again. And hopefully that will keep it much neater on the end there. There we go. And so now this is sewn on three sides. We're going to go back and reinforce these corners, as I was mentioning. About an inch or so out. I just come to the corner and we pivot. Oh, I don't have my hover mode on. And then we stitch again. I'm going to snip that. There we go. And then we're going to cut those off. And you don't want to cut your thread, but just slightly beyond, you want to cut off that corner and get as close to that as possible. And then I'm going to take just a wee bit more as well. There we go. I need to change my blade on that again. It's getting a little dull. There. And because I reinforced that corner, that is going to hold really well when I turn it inside out now. Another thing you can do in those corners is to take two stitches diagonally in the corner. And then that helps too to just round it off ever so slightly. It's going to be so cute. And now because we have this hemmed edge, when we get the poofing of the pillow in there and we stitch it shut, that edge will be so nice and pretty. I like nice and pretty. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I usually make a double sack for the, for the pillow part. 
Um, my pillow is going to be right about 13 inches square. So my smaller inner bag can be 13 or just a tad smaller than that. And then my bigger one has to be pretty close to that 13. If it's too big, um, it's gonna squish out too much and that's not good. So I'm marking it at about 13 and we're just gonna cut that off. Oh, I'm off my edge of my table here. And then I'm going to stitch that. I want a triple stitch on this one. Nice and close to the edge. I can even stretch that out a little longer. Sometimes I serge them, sometimes I triple stitch them. I love this little triple stitch zigzag. scraps that we previously had chopped up into little parts and pieces and we're going to stuff the smaller bag first and I'm going to turn it inside out so I don't have those rough edges and we're just going to stuff that this into the first one. And get all the corners in there nicely. it and fluff it and poof it and squish it and then give it a try. That's going to be really nice. Now I just have to fuss with it a little bit to make sure my corners are good. I might even put just a handful or two loose in there into the corners so that they're nice. And then we squish this down in here really well. We stitch the end because now we have these two nice hems. And then we fluff it a little bit more and it'll be perfect. So I am going to put just a little bit more in the corners here. You may have noticed I did not serge or stitch the inner and outer bag shut because if I need to take out a little bit of the fluff, it's easier this way. Otherwise I have to cut them open and re-stitch them, but I just make them a little longer than they need to be and that way I can just fold them over, tuck the open end into the bottom end of the other one, and that way it just it holds things nicely. Oh yeah, that's gonna be much better into the corners. Alrighty, I'm gonna put my clippets across the end here now and push that down in there a little bit out of the way and then we'll fluff it again once it's done. Oh, this is gonna be so cute. I love doing memory quilts and memory pillows. They're just so special. 
very tangible way to share your love. It's very comforting. There we go. And now if I can get my sewing machine on there, we're gonna stitch that shut and it'll be all good to go. While I was stitching the inner stuff, it didn't matter what color my thread was as long as it was close. But now that I'm gonna be doing the outside stitching, I want to make sure that my bobbin thread is the same color as my top thread. And I want it all to be pink. And actually, Again, a couple of different options. Sometimes I will top stitch around the outer edge on all four sides so that when I close this up again, it all has that outer little stitch edge. But I'm just going to put it on, on the bottom on this one. I think it'll be very nice with this hem. And my bobbin is ready. Let's put that in here. And we're just going to let it thread that needle for me. Ta-da! All right. Now, this is always the trickiest part, and sometimes if I have anybody nearby, I have them help me out here a little bit. Sometimes I have my hubby come in and help hold the pillow a little bit. All right. We're going to take a few stitches. I'm going to go a longer length. I want just a regular straight stitch. I'm going to take just a couple stitches and then I'm going to go backwards. If you try to start out on the end, this is not going to work well. Oh, and that got a little thick. It was not happy with me, so I'm just going to put it through by hand here. And I'm going to move forward a little bit there, and then I'm going to move forward a little bit more. Okay, and then I'm going to tell it we're okay so it doesn't worry about us so much. And now we're going to finish going. There we go. But yeah, it will not be happy starting out on the end. And then we're going to try to just keep this as straight as possible. This is always the trickiest part. So I'm stitching very close to the edge. And I'm lifting up the back end of the pillow. I've got my fingers in here really close. I'm on hover mode, so it keeps stopping every so often with the needle down and the foot up. Again, now it's going to get really thick here towards the end, so I might want to be ready at any moment to run the flywheel by hand here. Good. Good. And we're going to try to back up. Ta da! And there we go. And that is stitched, and now we just have to fluff it a little bit and get it all back in there and we have a beautiful memory pillow made from a t-shirt and double stuffed with hops batting. So now I'm going to finish cutting out the rest of these. We're going to figure out what parts and pieces I want for the back of this one over here. Yep, I do. I think I like that one best. So I hope you found this video tutorial helpful and informative come back and see us again um, thanks for joining our pillow party and we will have some more fun quick tip tuesdays on how to use some of your extra batting coming up in the future so keep checking back thanks for seeing us today toodaloo <music>